Good morning and welcome to Money Sense Mondays. Good to see all you people that have joined us before and welcome to anybody who's joining us for the first time. So this session today is for our five to eight year olds for the first 30 minutes and we're going to be exploring the exciting subject of needs and wants. So my name is Trudy Zimmer. I'm a community banker. I cover the Somerset area and generally I will be out and about in schools helping with these sessions but as we're in the situation we're in at the moment, we're going to be helping the parents at home with their homeschooling. So every society hopes that the children will grow up to be kind and give something back within that community. But as human beings, no matter what age, so we could be children, we could be adults, we are entitled to the rights of basic needs. So let's think about those basic needs. But we also have wants. And what we'd like to do in the session today is think about the difference between those. Let me hand over to my colleague a moment, James, and he'll introduce himself. Thanks, Trudy. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us again. If this is your first week, then I'm James. I'm a primary school teacher from Essex. And if you're back with us, then you already know me and you know how this all works. So we're going to go through a few different activities and we want you to join in by using your phones or your devices to add in on the comments. So I can see straight away that we've got lots of people with us joining us again this week. We've got Isaac and William. Hello to you two. We've got Rosie, aged eight, Cara, aged seven. And uh, good morning to Albert as well. So just before we begin, we've got one linked family with us, which we'll go to a bit later in this session. We were supposed to have two, but I'd just like to say a little get well soon message to Harrison because he can't join us this morning because he was uh, up in the night and uh, is a bit under the weather. So get well soon, Harrison, and hopefully yeah. we'll see you again next week. Great. Right. On with the first activity then. Trudy has said that we're talking about needs and wants this week. So the first thing we want you to do is we're going to put some pictures up on the screen and we want to see if you can separate those pictures into two sections. Which of those things are things that you need? And remember, a need is something that you must have in order to live and to survive. And which of those things are just wants? So things that we don't have to have, but it would be nice if we did. So, Derek, could we have those pictures up on the screen, please? There we go. What have we got there? We've got then a house, some sort of shelter. We've got some holidays. We've got food and water, electronics, clothing and toys and games. So it might be a bit difficult to put the answers for these in the comments, but um, you could try. But we're going to pop over and we're going to see Sarah and Amelia now to see what Amelia thinks. So, Sarah, Amelia, are you with us this morning? Can you hear us OK? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah, brilliant. Morning. Amelia. Morning. Amelia, have you had a little look at those pictures on the screen? Can you think any yeah. of those things? Can you pick one of those things that you think is a need, something that we have to have in order to live? Can you think of one of those things? What do we have to have? Food and water. Food and water, oh, and it's like you've, you've uh, read Aaron Watterson's mind as well, because he's gone for food and water as a need. <laughs> I think you're correct there. And um, Amelia, can you find any of those things that you think aren't really that important? You'd like to have it. In fact, you want to have it, but we don't need it. Which one of those things might be a want? Holiday. Hol yeah, I, don't, I think we all feel like we need a holiday at the moment. But really, in truth, we don't actually need it, do we? Great. Right. Thank you for that, Amelia. We'll pop back and see you again in a little moment. OK. Good. So as Amelia's just said, then she's picked two of them. Let's go through some of the answers there. So electronics. Uh, someone said shelter, food, water, clothing is the need. Uh, what else we got? Someone said the electronic toys, Phil Ruby Tomlinson says electronic toys, games and holidays are wants. So mm -hmm. I think we've pretty much got there. Let's have a look at the answers. Here we go. Yes, indeed. So needs over on the left hand side of my screen. My screen is mirrored, so I'm all over the place this morning. I don't know which <laughs> one it is. The needs are food and water, clothing and shelter, of course. And the things that we might just want are holidays, electronics and toys and games. Trudy, I think you've got a bit more information for us about needs and wants, have you? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit more. So I guess thinking about it from the bank, because needs and wants is something that we think about. But it's thinking about how the bank can help people look after the money that they need. So money is something that 
we need. We need that to, to pay for our shelter, to pay for our food and water. And how do the bank help with that? So firstly, and I know we've covered some of this off before, children. So actually, if you know the answers to something I'm going to say, pop it in the comments. Because the bank keep your money safe and secure. So by keeping it safe and secure, you remember that we had a safe. I think Amelia drew a safe last week where we keep the money safe. And we might pop that into a savings account. So something else we've mentioned in previous weeks to keep that money nice and safe. And for those that are a little bit older, they might have seen their parents use it. They have the app. So they look at their accounts all the time so that they can keep safe and secure in how the bank keeps that money. And it enables them to be able to get that money out when they need it as well. So the banks do protect that money. They protect it by the fact that it's kept safe and secure. But they also make sure that they're protecting it if they're paying for that by a card. So you will see your parents use a card all the time to pay for things. And actually, if they're doing that, there's an element of protection that the bank has for you when you're doing that payment. And there are different ways to pay for needs and wants. So needs, I guess, should always be a priority. So they should be the things that we think about first. So if we think about our mums and dads and that they get paid maybe once a month and they get some money in, if they get that money in once a month, what is really good to think about is actually what we actually need out of that and then what we've got left for a want. So all the things we need to pay for, so that might be our shelter, our food, our water, but actually there might be something that we want at the end of it and we've got money to pay for that. So that might be that we can afford to go for a nice day out or go to the cinema. But it might be that one month we can do that, but another month we might not be able to. So there's a little bit more information from the bank's point of view. So children, make sure you take that on board because we might be asking you a few questions later on around that. Good, lovely. Thank you, Trudy. OK, let's move on to our first proper activity then after that starter. And uh, let's introduce ourselves to a made up family, which we've called the Jackson family this morning. Let's have them on screen. So this is the Jackson family. And um, unfortunately, the, the Jackson family have been having a bit of a spend up. And the Jackson family have spent all of their money that they earned this month on toys and games for the children. What a lovely wow. family. Oh, I wish my parents had have uh, bought me or spent all their money on toys and games for me. Or actually, do I? Because what the Jackson family have neglected to do is they've not remembered their needs. They've spent all their money on wants, on toys, and they haven't thought about the things that they might need. So what we're going to ask you to do here is see if you can pick a few things, maybe a mini list that you could do. You could draw pictures if you've got pen and paper at home, or you could just talk to your grown-ups that you're watching with about it. Can you come up with some of the things that we think the Jackson family should have spent their money on this month? What are those things they need that they've forgotten about? OK, so pop some of those into the comments and uh, let's pop back to Amelia. Let's see what Amelia's been thinking of. Right, Amelia and mum, Sarah. Uh, what what should the Jackson family have been paying for, really, instead of those toys and games? Um, their house. Their, ha their yeah. house, yeah. Some of us, or some people, we, we either rent a house or a flat, so we have to pay someone each month so that we're allowed to live there, or some of us have what's called a mortgage, don't we? Trudy, which is yes, where we, we, we borrowed some money to pay for our house. So, yeah, they had to pay for the house. Amelia, can you think of another one? Food and water. Food and water. I did say, didn't I, that a need is something we must have to survive. And if you haven't got food and water, you wouldn't survive. But two great answers there. We'll be back to you in a bit. Let's go through some of the comments in the marshes, say a house and some shelter. Uh, Michael there says food. Uh, someone said food and water. Um, we've got a comment here that says... Somebody bills. said bills. Bills, <laughs> yeah. So rent, That's food, water, other bills like electricity and stuff like that. Okay, so we must do that. Uh, let's go through a few more catch up. Someone said we've clothes. Got shoes. Yeah. yeah, shoes and clothes from Lucy Carroll. We've got Excellent. another one with bills from Lee Coker. Get the um, gas bill. The Stevenson family said the gas bills. Yeah, Isaac the says... Bell. House rent. There's some good ones coming through there. So, yeah, so the Jackson family, then, we know that they should have maybe thought about their needs before they spent their money on the wants. Doesn't sound that fun, though, does it? So 
what we want to know now is now we've had a think about listing all the things that you need. Sometimes it's a bit of the boring stuff. We now want to know, can you think of three things that you would want? So not the Jackson family this time. This is about you at home. We're really interested to have a look at your comments and tell us three things that if you had some extra money left over after your needs, what would you want? OK, Trudy. Hello. Thinking back to when you were younger, can you think of something that you really, really wanted? Not needed, wanted. Ooh. I can remember when I really wanted a puppy. So I really wanted a puppy and I was the only one in the family that wanted a puppy. And I had to wait probably about six months to the point that I had to have my friend's dog around and look after it for two weeks to show that I was able to look after a dog. So, oh, um, no. yeah, that was something that I really wanted. There's definitely a want there. We don't need the puppy, yeah. although some people might. I can think of some, uh, yeah, perhaps yeah. if someone's visually impaired or can't see properly, That's they true. might need yeah. Guy, what about mind. you, James? So uh, well, when you were thing, a child, I won't waste too much time. But I, I always remember the time I want. This is definitely a want, not a need. I wanted a remote control hovercraft. Never got mm. it. Okay. Pointless. I don't think <laughs> I'd have used it anyway. But for some reason, I really wanted it. Let's scroll down. Let's have a look. Then what have we got? We've got makeup doll and pet from Bluebell. Somebody wants uh, an iPad, a phone, and a new sofa. But mum's found that bit funny, I think. <laughs> Barbie and a puppy, uh, some Lego and some more teddies. Look at these. Um, we've got uh, another one person wants a pet, a book. Somebody wants their ears pierced. It's a really, really good list of wants here. Yeah, really brilliant. Really interesting the difference between needing it and wanting it. Let's go back to Amelia because I think she's drawn a lovely picture for us. Amelia, have you got your picture of what you want? Oh, there we go there. A Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Switch. Other game consoles are available. But <laughs> <laughs> apparently they're so popular at the moment, I don't think you can even buy them online whilst everyone's been stuck in their houses. So uh, you, Amelia, and many other people want that, I think. So a couple more then. Somebody else wants a cat, uh, an Xbox. There we go, the other consoles. A new swing and a PS4. Some really great ideas. Now, the thing is, that sometimes your wants can change because when you're a child and when you're a grown up, the things that you want and the way that you think about stuff, it, it does. It just evolves, doesn't it? And it changes. And we've got a little picture on the screen maybe to kind of represent this. Here we go. Look. So what we want you to do now is if you're watching with a grown up, could you ask them to come up with three things that maybe they would want? if they had some extra money to spend it on, or maybe they're saving up towards something. And uh, we will pop back to Amelia and find out what she wants or what her mum wants as well. Uh, Trudy, yeah. I know you, you, you said about your puppy or the dog. Mm. What about now? Is there anything that you're saving up for or something that you'd want now? So I'm probably gonna be in line with a lot of people at the moment and wanting a holiday. Um, and that does mean saving up, holidays aren't cheap, um, but yeah. Definitely a holiday. Yeah. Somewhere and nice and warm and where you can just relax. Yeah, we, we, we keep coming back to these holidays, don't we? Perhaps we when do. Everyone will go off on one. And for me, actually, it's uh, it's not a games console or toys or things like that. What I would really like to do is to, uh, um, our house isn't quite, or well, it is big enough for the four of us, but it would be lovely to have an extension, a small extension on it, so that we could make the girls' bedrooms a bit bigger. So that's mm -hmm. what I would want. Let's flip back to Amelia then. Yeah. And, uh, let's see. So, Amelia, I think you've done two parts. Amelia, imagining you were a grown up, I think you've drawn us a picture to say what you would want if you were a grown up, when, haven't you? This is a beautiful picture. Here we go. You've drawn a limo, a limousine, <laughs> with all those seats in it. That's I love that. Picture, Amelia. And, Amelia, have you asked mum, or do you want to ask mum now? Ask mum what she would want. Oh, um, Oh, I would love a holiday like Trudy. I also would really, really love a hot tub. We've Ooh. got a blow up one, but I'd like a proper oh, one. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so thank you for that, guys. Um, we've just going up. Some people have had a, have asked and somebody wants a tree, a family holiday uh, to go to Disneyland. Another yeah. holiday as well. Um, and that... Somebody else had a small house extension, a new car, uh, a new bathroom. Interesting so one was a meal out as well, to have a that's... meal out. Yeah, we, we would all have a meal out as well. So, Trudy, um, how generally do our wants change from when we're younger to when we're older? 
So I think when they change to when we're older, we've probably got a little bit more money, um, but things do become a little bit more expensive. But what we're looking to do is to think about how we can be more family. So I think when we're younger, we are more family focused and it becomes a little less personal when we get older. We're very much about the things for the children when we're younger, so the toys and the games, and we become more focused on things that are a little bit more around us. So maybe a holiday, maybe a new car, those types of things. However, we need to think about things like, uh, do we have the income and money to buy something like that? That becomes more important because if something's more expensive, it might take us longer to save for. Uh, it may be that we have those unexpected things suddenly come our way that we need to pay for. So in previous sessions, we've mentioned to have some emergency money put aside. So suddenly our car breaks down or the fridge breaks and we need to pay for that. Now that could halt, that could change our plans with regards to what we're saving for. So some things to think about there. So there's a few things to think about and how things change. But generally, as we get older, our wants are bigger, are bigger things that we want um, for everybody and hand in hand with that more expensive. And we need to plan and we need to organize for that. But we need to do that when we're younger as well, but just in a smaller way. Good. Thank you for that. So it linked really well this week to what we were talking about last week, which was the savings, wasn't it? And coming yeah, up with completely. a plan, writing down what it is that you're trying to save for and then going through. And to remember that even as grown-ups, we can't have, even though we might have some more money than you as children, we still can't get everything we want because we have to take care of the needs first. So remember that next next time you're nagging your parents because you want some want a kitten or you want a new game or something like that. Remember that the needs have to come first before we can deal with those wants. And it's the same for grown-ups and children. Yeah. Excellent then. Right, well, we're doing well for time this week. So we're gonna have a quiz and then perhaps we'll have a bit longer than we usually manage to get some of your questions. So Derek, if we could have the quiz question up then. Here you go then. Question number one. See if you can get some answers for these. I've said this a few times and I'm gonna put a little rule in your answer to this one. The question is, what is a need? And you're not allowed to use the word need in your answer. <laughs> So you've got to give me an answer to this question without using the word need. What is a need? I'm going to give a moment to uh, get some comments coming through. So somebody said a need is you need them, but they've not followed my rule where they've used the word need in their answer. I'm going to come on and someone's given us an example, which is food. So we didn't want an example yet. I just want us to work out what the word need actually means. Who's going to be? I'm going to read the first person out that gives us a correct answer. Something you require to live. Natasha Clark. Very good. Working with Natasha Clark. Well done there. Uh, oh, an essential item. I've just they've just disappeared off the screen there. I'll see if I can give them a... It's Justine Piercy. Justine Piercy. Well done you. Essential. That word is brilliant. It means that you need it. Great. Question number two, I think we've kind of covered off what is a want. Well, it's the opposite to something you need. So we'll bypass that one. What have we got for question number three this morning? Why might some people not always get what they want? So what are the reasons? Why can't we just get everything off our wants list? Trudy mentioned a few of these a moment ago. Let's go to uh, go back to Sarah and Amelia and see if they've got an answer to this one while we wait for the comments to come. Why might people not always get what they want? Because um, some of it might be a lot of money and your parents might not have enough for that because they you need to buy drink and food. Yeah, brilliant. So you haven't got enough money <laughs> for those wants. What a really well explained there, Amelia. Thank you. So let's just go back again then. Some people said you might not get the things because you might not have enough money. Someone said the word budget constrained, which I really liked there, which means that, yeah, they've, they've had to spend their money on the other things so they haven't got enough left. Somebody said because it might take time to, to save up for it. Um, not enough money. You have to focus on the needs first. And uh, and one thing, Trudy, I think you mentioned, wasn't you, was the, the unexpected things. What do we mean by yeah. that? So thinking about those things that might happen that we can't plan for. 
So I mentioned about something breaking down. So um, might be your fridge breaking down, could be at the moment, a lot of people are having problems with their cars because they're not using them as much. And uh, we might have to spend some money on our car and we're not planning for that. Um, and that can, that can alter your plans around your savings. So thinking about having something put aside for that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I really wanted to spend some of my money on a new golf club. But when I looked out the window last week, I noticed one my car had a flat tire. So there goes that money. I have got to, got to put it aside and, and use it to repair that instead. Terrible, but true story. <laughs> question number four. Where do we use question? Question four. Is that gonna, here we go. How might a oh, this was the last thing we talked about this morning? How might a person's wants change over time? So, what's the difference between um, your wants when you're a child and your wants when you are a grown up? My comments are having a trouble refreshing this morning. I don't know if that's the internet connection. But let's go and have a look. Who's going to be the first one to come up with one of these? The correct answer. So, how might a child's wants change as they grow up to an adult? difference between the two uh we've still got an answer for number three coming on but we'll read that one out ellen said not enough money or no budget available uh ah, here we go just justine piercy again as you get older the wants get bigger and they change mm. so yeah the things you want change from that remote control hovercraft to maybe an extension <laughs> on the house or a holiday for your family steve hunton and, and children said more responsibility yeah as you're an adult and a grown up, you've got other things to be responsible for. Yeah, you mature, says BB Winters. And uh, because when you get to an adult, this is April age six, when you get to an adult, you focus on what's more important. And Jessica Knight says adults want boring stuff. <laughs> yeah, we've just talked about it, haven't we? So, but yeah, we, we definitely think more about needs than first than wants, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Great. Right, Great answers there and well done on the quiz again this week. Right then, just enough time for some questions. Now, whilst we've got Trudy and her expertise here. So if anybody has a question to ask Trudy about needs and wants, now is the time to write it in. I think Amelia might have a question ready. Amelia, you get to go first up. Unless, oh, there, there we are. I thought Hello, they'd Amelia. Hello, Amelia. Hello. Do you spend all your money on needs and not and not wants? You have to spend all your money on needs, Trudy. Ooh, that's a good question. So I don't know if you remember earlier on in the session today, we mentioned that it might be one month. So when mum gets her money each month, it might be that one month she has to pay all those things that you need. So all your food, your water and pay for your house. And actually at the end of that, there might not be very much money left. So one month, you might not have very much money to spend on wants. But another month, there might be some money left and then you can pay for your wants. So it's important to think about what you have to pay out for your needs first and then what's left for your wants. And generally, your needs are more than your wants. So the things you have to pay out for. Is that okay, Amelia? Okay. That's a good question though. Thank you. Right, Trudy, I've got another great question here from Nat it's Natasha okay. Clark, and, it, and the question's from Phoebe and Amelie. And they say, what if you need emergency money for something, but you don't have it? What would That's you do then? Really, That's a really good question. So emergency money. So I guess it's a case of maybe talking to somebody that you know, because they might be able to help you or certainly come into the bank and talking about that because we have people that will help you and talk you through and look at those options to make sure that you can get over that stumble. So it might be that you, for one month, need to have a little bit more money, but the next month you pay that back, for example. So it's just talking to somebody about that. I think the really important thing is if you haven't got enough money is to talk to somebody. So children, talk to your parents if it's at the moment there's something you want and you haven't got the money because your parents will be able to help you with how you can plan for that and likewise as you get older the bank will help you with that in planning and reviewing and how you can plan for that lovely thank you for the question though thank Good you question. Well, Trudy, as usual those 25 minutes have absolutely flown by and yeah. next monday we're not here are we because it's bank holiday so we've got a week off 
we um, have. What can the children be doing at home in the meantime before they join us again in two weeks? Yeah, so we have a really good top tip um, and something I guess that you've taken on board today around um, some of the things we need. So thinking about the food and water. Um, but I guess when you're going out with your parents and maybe thinking about the shopping and we all need food every week. And at the moment, that seems to be what we're spending a lot of our money on is our weekly food bill. So children, think about that and maybe help your parents and see if when you've got the shopping list, you could split that into a list of things that you need and things that you want so that you can split it into two. And you may be even be able to revisit that and think, actually, do I really need that? Or some of those wants, can I actually cross some off and save a little bit of money? Because sometimes we can do that. Do I need to buy those two bars of chocolate this week or those that big bag of crisps, for example? Those are some things you can think about doing and let us know how you get on because that'll be good to know about something that you can fill your time with and help your parents with over the next couple of weeks. And then ideas as well. So you can actually visit the Money Sense website. I've mentioned this every week, but we have a great game on there called the Change Game. So those of you that have been onto the Money Sense website, it's at mymoneysense.com. Pop on there, loads of educational and fun games for you to um, learn about money. And the Change Game is one that you'll find particularly interesting. Um, we're going to be coming back in for the next 30 minutes and looking at a session for our 8 to 12 year olds. And we're going to be looking at raising money for charity. So we are going to be coming back with that one. But for now, I will let James just say goodbye. And then we'll leave you with an example of a great new free game that you can download. It's called Island Saver. It's available on lots of platforms. So have a look at that. And that's something you can play with. Or you can have a look at over the next couple of weeks. I'll just leave you with James, but I'll see you in a couple of weeks time. Great. Thanks, Trudy. Then, yep. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and for your comments and answers this morning. If you want, you can hang on for a few minutes and join us for the next session about raising money for charity, where we've got a very special guest. Fingers crossed that they've logged on and they are ready to join us. <laughs> a very special guest family joining us in the next session. But we're just going to go offline for a couple of minutes to get ready and we'll see you again soon. So bye for now. Bye bye. The islands need your help. Rubbish has washed up on their beaches, but you can sort it out. Blast the trash, earn cash, rescue the bankimals, save the islands, and make things good again. Download Island Saver for free and start your adventure. Okay. have a unique ability to pull together. At NatWest, we're working together with the National Emergencies Trust to raise money for the charities hard at work in our communities. Whatever you can donate, NatWest will double it. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we'll give thanks to those who go above and beyond. Together, we'll make sure <coughs> no one feels alone. Together, we'll get help to those that need it most. Together, we'll look after our neighbours. Together, we'll do our bit. Together, we can make a difference. Hello and welcome back. 
Uh, for those people that were already with us, welcome and thank you for staying on board. And hello to anybody who's joined us for this new session. So this is for our eight to 12 year olds. And we're gonna be looking at the fun session of fundraising and thinking about how we can raise money for charity. Um, so for those of you that haven't met me before, my name is Trudy, I'm Trudy Zimmer, and I'm a community banker covering the Somerset area. So giving money to a good cause can make you feel really good. Something that's a really good thing to do both mentally and physically. And the word fundraising is used to describe raising money for a charity or a good cause. And anyone can fundraise. You could be yourself, a child in school, you can fundraise, or we can be adults and fundraise as well. It's something that we can do successfully, but it does take planning and organization. And that's something we're gonna to explore together in the next 30 minutes. Let me hand over to my colleague to introduce himself. Hi, thanks Trudy. Hi everyone, I'm James and I'm a former primary school teacher from Essex. Um, thanks for joining us today. I think we've got a few new people based on our, our, our special guest this week. So uh, if this is your first week, then it's great to have you along. Uh, well, Trudy's talked about uh, what this session is about, which is charity and fundraising for different charities. So to kick off, what we'd like you to do in the comments today is to tell us, have you ever done any fundraising for charity? And if so, what have you done? And who did you raise the money for? So what did you do and who was it for? If you drop those in the comments, then we'll try and read some of those out. Just a few shout outs to start off with as well. I've seen we've got Lacey with us this morning. Hi, Lacey. We've got Olivia, aged eight. We've got Daisy Lloyd. We've got Tom from St. John's School and we've seen that Ollie is with us this morning. So hello to all of you lot that have joined hello. us. Too. And speaking of people joining us, I'm going to really cross my fingers because I'm hoping that technology is going to work. <laughs> we should have a special. Yes, we do. We have former England cricket Good captain morning. Michael Vaughan together with his daughter, Jem the more important person, Jemima, of course. Hi, Jemima. Hi, Michael. <laughs> Thanks for joining Hi. us this morning. So, Jemima, we're going to come to you first. Jemima, have you ever done any fundraising for charity? Yeah, we had to sell cakes at school. And uh, with all the money, we gave it to the NSPCC. The oh, N lovely. A really good choice of charity. What, what? Vanilla. 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 <laughs> did, did you have to bake the cakes, Jemima? Yeah. Did you get well, Dad I, to bake I, some I, of the cakes that. as well? <laughs> bake them, Michael, or bought them? What was that? Sorry. Did, did you bake them or did you buy them? Did you cheat? I, I no, no. I, I helped to to bake, but I also bought a few as well. What were you charged? What did you charge? It's fifty p a cake, wasn't it? Fifty p a cake. That is a great thing to do, Michael. I, I'm sure in your role you've been involved in a fair few charity ventures as well. Is there anything you'd like to tell us about? Yeah, um, I walked um, the Wall of China in 2011 uh, for the Chef uh, Sheffield Children's Hospital. Um, I walked the Himalayas three years ago for the Laureus Sports for Good Foundation. Uh, I've got on a bike and cycle from London to Paris, London to Champagne. I have to say London sh to Champagne was a very uh, nice ending uh, down in Champagne. Uh, yeah, so cycling, walking, uh, I've done quite a few things over the years. So very good, all, all very Fantastic. physically active ones they sound like as well. Well, I, I was gonna tell you about something I've done, but I, I can't. don't think I can match that. But Trudy, <laughs> you can, can't you Trudy? What have you done to raise some money? Oh, so last year, yes. So I actually did, and I've got a picture here. This is me skydiving last year. Oh, so wow. I did a skydive for the Southwest Children's Hospice last year. Um, our whole team were raising money for them. Uh, we raised over, a, or I raised over a thousand pounds doing that. So uh, yeah, really good cause. And it does make you feel really good when you do something for charity. Very good. Well done you, Trudy. Right, I'm just going to go to a few of the comments there. So we've got the Marshes walked 222 miles for the rugby club. I hope that wasn't in one go. Harrison and Poppy raised money um, at their school for Demelza House. We've got um, Harrison uh, raised money for Shelter, which I believe is a homeless charity. And they, he spent 24 hours on his trampoline. Jemima, what Why? do you think about that? <laughs> you Did you go on a trampoline for 24 yeah. hours? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> up and down. A garden sale. Emma Osborne did a garden sale uh, for the NSPCC. And uh, there was a charity rugby match for motor neurons disease there from the leeches. So and that was from George. So keep those coming in and we'll see if we can come back to some of those because there's some really good ideas. Now, the thing about fundraising is it's not always easy to do. You need some certain skills 
if you're going to be involved or you're going to organize some fundraising activities. So what we want you to do next is can you name us any of the skills that you think you need to have as a person in order to be able to fundraise? Drop them in the comments for us. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to go to Michael and Jemima and see if they can come up with a couple for us. Skills, Jemima. What do you, what do you have to have about you to be a good fundraiser? You need to be good working in teamwork. Yeah, that's good. Teamwork. Yeah, because it's really difficult to just do it by yourself, isn't it? So mm. you definitely need to have a good team around you. And a good team player is someone that doesn't argue. Because if everyone wants to do it their way, it's not going to go well. <laughs> So I like that. <laughs> what about Dad? Does Dad have any suggestions? I, I, I think you need the teamwork, but you need a lot of organisation. Organisation. So teamwork. Organisation. Let's have a little look then. Uh, let's see. We've got kindness. Yeah, I think you need to be a kind person even before you start. So kindness there from the Govins and the Trents. We've got brave. Hayley Hare says brave. I think, Trudy, that might have been the same for you. You had to be brave, didn't you, when you jumped out of that aeroplane? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got there. Somebody said in intellect. So I think, yeah, you need to be a little bit clever, don't you? Because you need to know what you're going to be doing. Helpful. Um, T says organisation, just like Michael said. So And determination. Yeah, what if it doesn't go right at the start? You've got to keep yourself going, haven't you? And, and don't give up. And someone said positivity and uh, and passion there. I love that one. That was from the Froy Smith's passion. Let's have a look on screen and see if we've got them all. So Derek, if you could pop them up there. So let's let's check. Um, Jemima, can you remember what some of the things we said? If I read them out, you give us a thumbs up if we got them. Did we say organisation? Yes. We did, did we say um, planning? Oh, yeah, we sort of covered that off, didn't we? Planning and time management, numeracy. So good math skills. Did anyone say you have to be clever at math? <laughs> oh, no, we said clever, but it was particularly about the math, which is my subject. So we like that. Motivation. I'd be about motivate. That was the passion and the determination. Yeah, thumbs up for that one. Teamwork. Did we get that? Yeah, you got Absolutely. that Absolutely. And oh, communication means you being a good talker, <laughs> able to talk to other people. Did we get that one? That's, that's kind of organising. We sort of got there, didn't we? So I think we did well and we pretty much got all of those. So thank you for your comments there, everybody. Now, what are we going to do next? Trudy, before we go through our step-by-step -step plan for fundraising, could you mm. tell us how the banks might get involved and help with their charity work? Yeah, yeah. Gosh, what a lot of skills we need to be doing that, uh, the charity work, but uh, really important. So let's think about it from the bank's point of view. Um, because the bank's doing something really important at the moment and something we're really passionate about. So we're passionate about supporting charities and we support our staff to do the same. So as a bank, each year we run a lot of fundraising events. And I've already mentioned with the um, skydiving that I did for the Southwest Children's Hospice, that's something that we organise through the bank. And we do that individually, we do it as teams. And the bank helps us run different campaigns. But right now and right at the moment, we are helping our customers and colleagues to support the National Emergencies Trust. So you may have seen the video at the beginning. Um, and we are supporting the coronavirus relief efforts in the UK through that. So all of you will have heard around that. And it's great that as a bank, we're supporting that. But we're actually matching all donations up to the value of £5 million. So how great that anything that you pop in, we're going to be matching. Um, and as a bank, we also give our colleagues and all, all staff members up to three days off to do charity work so that we can do that within our working week. We help the charity to look after their money. So actually, a charity is just like you or I. So, James, you've probably got a bank account um, and a charity is just like that. How big or how small, it doesn't matter. We make sure that we can look after their money for them. Um, so that they come in, they pay it in, and when they actually need that money, we can make sure that they can take it out in a safe and secure way. And while they don't need it, again, we are keeping that safe and secure for them. Now, really interesting, as some of you might want to put some notes in the comments around this, but actually the bank has raised an awful lot of money for charity. And last year, our staff raised over £4.3 million for charity. That's a great amount of money, and it's really a feel-good thing to know that it's an organisation that's raising some great money for charity. Yeah, some interesting information for you, children. Hope you find that useful. 
Very good. Thank you. We've still got some of the ideas coming in. So we've got Jay Eccleston has ran half a mile for charity. And this is the thing. It doesn't matter how big or how you might check the Himalayas like Michael, or it might just be half a mile. Whatever you can do to help is really good and really worthwhile. Now, if you've been inspired by perhaps some of the stories you've heard during this session, or maybe there's someone I'm sure you've heard of, which is Captain Tom. Jemima, did you have you heard of Captain <laughs> Tom? Yeah. Yeah, do you, do you know what he did to raise money? He did one of his laps of his garden. He walked his garden he to did. raise money. <laughs> NHS, and I think he raised over thirty million pounds, didn't he? So, if you've been inspired to do something similar, we've put together a, a five-step plan to help you organise your own fundraising event. And Michael and Jemima, whilst we've got you with us, we'd like you to be our guinea pigs for this, if that's okay. Yeah, we want to go through and perhaps help you to think about your next fundraising activity, too. So step one, before you do anything else, you've got to consider who or which cause or which charity you want to raise money for. So, Jemima, my question to you for step one is, who would you like to raise some money for? The NHS. The NHS. A, a very topical charity, following in, Captain, following in Captain Tom's footsteps there. Good. So we've decided, number one, we're going to raise it for the NHS. Now, number two is sometimes the hardest one, because step two is once you've decided who you want to raise it for, what's this big idea? What are you going to do to help people give you some money? All right. What is your exciting idea? So if you've got any exciting ideas, Michael and Jemima, how we might raise some money for the NHS. What are you going to do, Mimes? Uh, throughout the week, run 3K every day. Wow. 3K every, whoa. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not sure I could manage that. 3K every day. That is a really good suggestion and a really good thought. So once you've had your idea, the next step is where we go to step three. And, and this, this is the bit where you have to work out the details. So how, Jemima... Are we going to, what are the details of this? So you know how far you're going to run. Is there anything you're going to need before you can start doing it? Uh, some training. <laughs> <laughs> training or trainers? Training. <laughs> or both. Some tra <laughs> but this is really important because then you realise, oh, maybe I can't just go and do it tomorrow because I need to train a bit and get ready for it first. So that's good. Um, I also said trainers. So you have to make sure you've got the right sports kit. Have you got the right sports kit? Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to make dad do this with you as well? I think yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Definitely. Yeah, he's not playing anymore, so he, he might need to uh, to keep himself. Have to walk. Yeah, <laughs> do some walking as well. And and how are we going to get people to actually raise some money out of this? How are you going to get money for doing this running? Uh, we're going to tell all our friends and they can sponsor us. So a sponsorship event, that is a really good idea. So they know you're doing something that's difficult and that's how we're going to get the money. They're going to sponsor you and perhaps give you some donations. Right. If you get to step three, if you've had a really amazing idea for step two and you get to step three and it's really complicated and you realise it's not going to work, you have to go backwards and you have to go back to step two. And sometimes with fundraising children, you have to keep going step three, step two, step three, step two, until you get the right plan. Because if you've decided to do something that's going to cost you £5,000 to do and it might only raise 200 then it's not going to work, is it? OK, so we've got a plan that's going to work there, a sponsored run. Good. Step four, Jemima. Your dad might be able to help you out with this one because he's got lots of people that follow him online. But how are you going to tell people about your event? Get mummy and daddy to email all their friends. Yeah, oh, that's good. <laughs> Can you have a think, though, perhaps the two of you, if mummy and daddy didn't have that many friends, um, as many people to, to go out to. And like Captain Tom, he raised loads because it went really big on social media, on Facebook and things like that. But if not, is there any other way that you could share your news about your event to people? Uh, Instagram. I love it. You're, you're very much a, a, an online person. What about anything <laughs> to do with paper and pens? Are you an arty person? I could send a letter. Letters. We could do little letters and send it round to our neighbours and things. Or maybe even you could put something up on a wall or on a lamppost. What could you put up? A leaflet. Yeah, leaflets. Yeah, and, and, and that's good. It's hard work. But charity and fundraising isn't all that easy. 
Good. And then so we now we know we're going to tell everyone about it. So the last step is to make sure we have this event. And then it says on the screen there, calculate the profit. Trudy, what, what's this? What's the profit? So the profit is, so say we were having um, a, let's say a cake sale. That's in a one, a one that a lot of people have been messaging through that they do in the schools. If you have a cake sale, you're going to have a cost because it's going to cost you to actually bake those cakes. So Jemima, when you did your bake sale, it would have cost you to actually make those cakes at home because mm. you have to buy the flour and the sugar and the butter. So that would have had a cost. Now, when we actually sell the cakes, we sell them for a cost, but we then we take out what we actually paid out originally. So it might be that it cost us one pound to make the cakes, but we make 10 pounds from the sale and actually our profit therefore would be nine pounds because we've made nine pounds on top. So it's how much we make once we take out the cost that it originally took us to set up or to pay for the ingredients that we needed. So that's what profit is. So uh, that's how much we can make at the end of it. It's a really important thing to think about. Great. Anna and Jemima, on your idea, are we going to have to spend any money at the start? Or is it actually a really good idea because it's, it's free? It's free. It's free. Yeah. So every bit of money you make is going to end up being profit, isn't it? So I love this. Right, I'm going to be looking out on Dad's Twitter feed to see if, uh, <laughs> see if he posts and see if you do this 3K each day for a week. Because if you did, I think it would be amazing. And, and it will inspire some of us to get out there and do something similar as well. Right, we're going to give you two just a breather for a few minutes while we ask our, the boys and girls at home to do something, OK? So we'll come back to you in just a moment. Um, right, everyone at home, on the screen... Uh, I think we're going to have a picture of three people for our next activity. Here we go. So we've got Mr. Ali, Mr. Simmons and Mrs. Jamal. So what we want to do is we want you to get your emojis on that for this next activity. Or you could use words for feelings as well. And we want you to give us three different feelings or three different emotions. So either in words or in emojis. I'm going to tell you about these three people. And I want you to just put three words or three emojis to tell us how they each are going to be feeling. So, Mr. Ali, Mr. Ali has done some fundraising and he has raised £500 for a care home near to where he lives. Mr. Simmons or Mr. Simons lives in the care home. He's one of the residents that lives in this care home that Mr. Ali has raised the money for. And Mrs. Jamal is the person, the owner. So she owns and she works in and she runs the care home. So we've got three different people there. And how are they all going to be feeling? So Mr. Ali raised the money. Mr. Simons is going to benefit from the money because he lives in the care home, but Mr. Ali's donating to. And Mrs. Jamal is the owner. OK, so we've got, I think, I'm going to try and translate these emojis. Victoria Smith says uh, someone, I think it's kind of a few, bit of an exhausted and a bit happy emotion there. Uh, we've got lots of happy emojis from Oliver Tomlinson to say they're all going to be feeling happy. We've got another one that says sort of tired. And I think the hands together means thankful. So we've yeah. got exhausted, happy in the middle and thankful from Mrs. Jamal there. This is really good going. This is uh, we've got lots of somebody else has got three happy faces in a row. Anybody going with words rather than emojis to make my life? We've got easy. happy, grateful and excited. Lovely. And we've got happy. proud. Proud is a good word. Proud. Proud for Mr. Ali of how he's been working so we've got tired happy and grateful and thankful again from nikki ely uh and oh look we've got a cheers cheers sign there from simon harris so we've got feeling good feeling great in the middle and cheers for thank you there so some great thoughts and ideas and i think the message from this is that yeah fundraising benefits everybody not just the person receiving the charity or the money at the end of it but it benefits you the feelings that you get having done something good is, is just as important as the feelings of the people that get at the end. Absolutely. Great. Good activity there. So what's the time? We've got about five or ten minutes left. And because we've got Michael and Jemima with us this week, we're going to uh, skip the quiz and we're going to have a little bit more time for some questions and answers. So if you have any questions um, that you'd like to ask Trudy about fundraising and how the bank can help, or maybe you've got any questions that you'd like to ask Michael and Jemima, pop them in the comments and we'll see if we can get one or two of them in. Let's go back to Jemima now. 
And uh, Jemima, do you have a question that you perhaps might want to ask Trudy? Maybe something about when you finish doing your fundraising. Yeah. How can I send the money I raised to the charity? Wow, really good question. In fact, we get lots of people come into the bank with that, saying that they've raised money and how can they pay that in. So you can just go into your bank and take your money in because your charity will give you some special slips that you can pay that money into. It might be that you don't have your own account, but you can pop it into mum and dad's account and mum and dad can then move that directly into the charity's account so do it that way but actually if you want to do it and it's quite fun to do it you can count up all that money yourself you can go into the bank and you can then pay that into the charity account because do you remember me saying that the charities have an account with the bank just like your dad has an account with the bank just like i've got an account with the bank so actually you can make a nice fun trip count up all the money and take it into the bank is that okay yeah, yeah? Great. Thank you. Great. Right. Um, I've got Lacey, Lacey Beardmore, perhaps there, has said, what is a good charity to say for and why would you say for them? Now, obviously, that everybody's got their own answers for this, for something that means something, something that's close to yeah. their heart. Um, but, Michael, I noticed at the start on the advert that we had at the beginning, um, you were in it raising money or awareness for the NET. Do you want to just tell us a bit about that? The which one? The NSP? The, the NET? The so the National, the National Emergency, Emergency Trust. Trust. That's what the bank is raising the money for at the moment around the coronavirus side of things. Um, so certainly, yeah, there's the involvement within that. So that's really helping with the NHS like you were looking to do, Michael. Good stuff with that. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and actually, you can combine that with um, perhaps, Jemima, your money could go towards that cause as well. So that's fantastic. And that's great as well. Um, let's have a look again. Refresh the comments there. Uh, do you have any ideas for fundraising? Well, I think we've been through quite a lot wow. of those, haven't we? How old do you have to be? Dave Connor, whoever's with him, has said, how old do you have to be? Trudy, how old do you have to be for fundraising? Do you know, I don't think there is an age at all. As You, know, you get young children... Pretty, you get young children at nursery raising money for charity, doing little fun walks and things like that. So as long as your parents are behind you and know what you're doing, then I don't think there is an age. There's no age limit on it. Absolutely no age limit. Good. Right. So because we've got Michael with us as well, I've seen a couple of questions coming in that are a bit more cricket related. So we'll, we'll go off topic just slightly at the moment. Michael, <laughs> my first question to you is... Um, as a teacher, I know that we always used to have many budding cricketers and with the success of the England women's team and certainly the England's men team as World Cup holders, how could children, uh, what could they be doing at home during lockdown or how could they get themselves into cricket? Um, well, if you've got any space, just get in the garden. Um, if you've got a bat, great. A ball, obviously, you need in, in, in cricket. Just to hit balls against uh, the wall. Uh, if you've got a brother or sister or a mum and dad that wants to bowl or play, that's even better. But if you're on your own, it's it's quite a good sport for just very similar to tennis, just hitting the ball against the wall and, you know, getting the reaction off the wall and trying to hit it, try and do five to start with. And then it, can you keep it going for 10 and then just keep growing it? If you can get to 100, you're very, very good at uh, <laughs> hand hand-eye uh, coordination, which is what cricket's all about, whether you're catching, whether you're, you're you know, in the field, facing the delivery, it's all about your hand-eye. So anything that you can improve your hand-eye coordination. Very good. And, uh, and, and another question there on the cricket front, we're doing one more. Sonia Marie says, how hard is it to be a captain of your country? <laughs> uh, well, it's great. Um, there are times where it's quite tricky, but... Um, for the most part, it's a, it's a huge honour. Um, there's only a, a small few that are very fortunate to be given the captaincy. And I always say to any young cricketer that captaincy is the, is the best place to be on the field because you can bowl yourself whenever you want. You can put yourself in any fielding position and you can put yourself in any position in the batting order. So being the captain has its advantage. As much as it can be tough at times, it has a, a lot of advantages as well. It's, it's the best job. I believe, in English sport, being the England cricket captain. Very good. And you, you obviously had a very successful time of it as well. So well done for that. Jemima, do you think you might try and follow in Dad's footsteps or have you got your eyes on something else? I've got my eyes on something else. Oh, what, what's your plans? What do you think you want to do? I want to 
want to be a dancer. A dancer. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think you'd have made a great cricketer because I saw you in one of your dad's adverts and you were playing catch <laughs> in the garden. You're very good. But if you want to be a dancer, I think that's great. And that's what you should go for. Good. I'm just going to pop back to the comments briefly. So the Melissa McGowan um, has been working and helping cook food for the homeless. So that's really good. Sometimes you yeah. don't have to raise the money. Just doing the action will have that benefit that we want as well. And uh, I keep losing the comments because they're flying in so quickly. Uh, there was another great one that somebody had been doing and I think it's disappeared uh never mind one more question though for you trudy and i, I i'm gonna catch you out here i think i'm gonna really stop you somebody has you. Asked, does the queen have a bank account does the queen <laughs> have a bank account <laughs> <I'd>... <laughs> so personally i don't know if the queen but the queen would bank with the bank of england so the queen has something in connection with the bank of england so she will have people who actually deal with all her banking for her and it will go via the main bank within London, the Bank of England, as opposed to any normal bank. Um, we have specific banks that are for um, people like the Queen. So, yes, there will be some banking because, yes, that has a, but she will have somebody who does that all for her. Good stuff. Right. Well, again, I always say this, but the time has absolutely flown no, no. by. Just before we say goodbye and say goodbye to Michael and Trudy, I'm sorry, Michael and Trudy, Michael and <laughs> Jemima, get it right. Uh, Trudy, could you just talk us through briefly what people and what Jemima could be doing uh, before next week? Or not next week, because we've got a week off, haven't we? What could they be yes, doing so for two weeks' time? We're not here next week, because next Monday is Bank Holiday Monday. But in the week, it's really great to be visiting our Money Sense site. So if you go on to mymoneysense.com, there's loads of educational fun games on there. And there's certainly one on there called the School Fundraising Interactive Activity, where you can look to put some of those things that we've mentioned together and help, and you can use that to help you plan any fundraising you might want to do um, at the moment or maybe in the future um, once you're back at school. So have a look at the My Money Sense site. In a moment, we're gonna be sharing with you a new release. So we've got a new release on our Money Sense site, um, a game that has been released called Free, called Island Saver. So so many platforms this can be downloaded onto. It might be an Xbox, it might be a PlayStation or just on your computer. It's completely free, but you'll get a, a viewing of that in one moment. So I just wanna end by saying, I will see you again in two weeks time. Uh, thank you all for viewing and thank you all for your loads of comments, but a big thank you to Michael and Jemima for joining us today. Um, it's great to have you on board and have your input. So thank you for that. I'll let James just end and say goodbye. Yep, yeah, that's right. Thanks, Trudy. So we'll see you here hopefully again in a couple of weeks' time. And Jemima, you've been an absolute star with all of your answers Absolutely. helping us out this morning. Michael, you've not been too bad as well. But you know, <laughs> it's all about Jemima and the children, really. But thank you for being with us. And um, have a great week, everyone. And we'll see you again soon. So bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Savvy Island Islands need your help. Rubbish has washed up on their beaches, but you can sort it out. Blast the trash, earn cash, rescue the bankimals, save the islands, and make things good again. Download Island Saver for free and start your adventure.